بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حب التفلا continue on in our sittings of Ramadan uh, we reach a very important part of the treaties that Imam Ibn Rafaimin is talking about the merits of reciting the Quran in Ramadan so it's very very important that we remind ourselves it's an excellent reminder that we need to read from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and benefit especially during this holy month of Ramadan. The Shaykh began by saying, my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who rehearse the book of Allah, establish regular prayer, and spend in charity out of what we have provided for them, secretly and openly, hope for a commerce that will never fail. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that from the sifat of the mu'mineen, that the characteristics of the believer is that they recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rehearse the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They establish the salat. And they spend in charity. If they have money to spend in charity, they spend it. Uh, and they spend it in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They spend it in good. And what is... Uh, a beautiful faida for the believer and a reminder for the believer is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives you that money to spend in his cause. And from what we give them, they spend. And what made me reflect on that as we read this ayah, but also reflect, I was thinking of one of my uh, colleagues that's really into uh, the financial markets. He's really into Bitcoin and into cryptocurrency. Okay, it's a different type of currency which is not backed by uh, dollars or you know. Anyway, it's it's a new type of currency, a new way of of moving money, you could say, and a new type of money. So anyway, he's really into it, and every day he gives me an update about this cryptocurrency. He never remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's not a Muslim. But he always, you know, attributes on the markets going up 17%. And if it does this, if it does this, all the speculation doesn't have anything to do with realizing where that blessing is coming from and where is it coming from. Who's it coming from? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the sifat of the believers is that from what they are provided with, they spend. They spend from what Allah gave them. So really, in a sense, you could almost say they don't have a haq to it. Or they have a haq to it, but the haq is given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just given just because they have a good job or just because they do such and such business or whatever, but it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately. And so from the sifat of the believers is they spend secretly and openly and they hope for a commerce that will never fail. That commerce that will never fail will be Jannah. That's what the movement they hope for, they believe in, they want. So you should want Jannah. Always remember about paradise. It's not just something strange or something, uh, you know, we want to read about Jannah. So that way we remind ourselves of the pleasures of Jannah and what to look forward to in our daily lives. The Shaykh mentioned something beautiful here. He says there are two ways to recite the Book of Allah. How many ways did he mention? Two ways. He said, the first is by believing what you read, following its rulings, doing what it commands, and staying away from what it forbids. And he said, we'll talk about this in another sitting, inshallah. So, the first way of reciting the Quran is to recite it, to practice it, to, stay, to adhere to its commands, and avoid its prohibitions. Because it's the speech of Allah, it's the divine speech of Allah, it's the perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not created, and it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the sifat, it is a sifa, mit sifatillah. It is a characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kalam, sifa to kalam. So the Quran is the kalam of Allah, it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned in, I think, the first lesson we talked about taqwa. Taqwa is adhering to the commands of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. So the one who's practicing the Qur'an 
is adhering to the commands of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions. So this is the first way that uh, a person can recite the Quran that Ben Uthaymi mentions. He said, then he said, the second way is just vocalization. So we get reward. That's the thing that's different about the Quran, is we get reward just for reading it. Even when you don't understand. So many Muslims, millions of Muslims have recited, memorized the Quran around the world. And even more, a billion or more, recite the Quran. And so from those millions, there are millions who have no idea really what they're reciting. They have to depend on translation. If they're Indonesian, there's so many Indonesian hafaz that memorize the Quran, but they don't know, they don't know Arabic. And they don't know necessarily the meanings of the Quran. And there are maybe millions of Somalis, I'm sure, that have also memorized the Quran, that probably don't know the meaning of the Quran too, except for the ones who know Arabic. The ones who learned Arabic and they learned the uh, you know, learn the meanings and they learn tafsir and they study. But of course people also study tafsir in their own languages. And likewise in all the various other languages uh, around the world that the Muslims know and they recite the Quran and they may not even know the meaning. So the second way is just vocalization by vocalizing the Quran, meaning reciting the Quran. This is also known as kira'a, recitation. There have been many texts that talk about the virtues of this type, whether it be reciting the Quran, surahs, or just ayat. Uthman ibn Affan, Uthman ibn Affan, radiallahu ta'ala'anhu, narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of youth is he who learns the Quran and teaches it. Ruhahu Bukhari. There's a beautiful hadith. Khayrakum min ta'allamu al-Quran wa allamuhu. The best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and teaches the other people. That's why it's so important if you can memorize the Qur'an and you become a Ustad or Ustadha and teach other people the Qur'an. And even if you don't memorize the whole Qur'an, if you memorize something good of the Qur'an and you know how to recite it properly and you teach other people at the Duxiga or wherever, you get edger for that. That is, that's Alveen. That's so immense, the reward. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Khayrakum. He said, the best of you. Khayrakum bin ta'alam al-Qur'an. The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an wa'allamuhu and teach it. The best of you is those who learn it and teach it. That's the best of you. And this is in Sahihain, in, uh, in Sahihain, on Aisha, on Aisha ta, radiallahu ta'ala anha, that the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam said, a person who recites the Quran and reads it fluently will be in the company of the obedient and noble angels. And he who reads the Quran haltingly, meaning they have difficulty, and with difficulty, will have a double recompense. And that's why if you're not an Arab, that learning the Quran, because it's not your language, Aslan, it's not your your mother tongue. Unless you grew up in an Arab language, uh, or you grew up learning the Quran and learning the Arabic language. But most of us, it's a second language, if, if we even know much of it. And so, the reward that we get for reciting the Quran, especially when it's difficult for us, we make mistakes. Even the Arabs, they make tons of mistakes. Even the Quran, that are very good imams, great imams. I won't even mention their names, but it's known. They make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. All the children of Adam make sins and make mistakes, and the best of those are those who repent. So anyway, aside from that, we all, uh, you know, because it's not our language, we, we make mistakes. I make mistakes ton all the time in pronouncing in, in Arabic and reading and but well, we got to keep going. And guess what? The reward is more. You get double the reward because it's not your language. Allah knows it's not your language. Allah knows it's difficult for you. So you get more reward than the one who was raised up, who has the tongue Arabiya, Lisan Arabiya, that they have the Arabic tongue. You get more reward because it's difficult. Maybe you make more mistakes. You, you have a, a Canadian uh, 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 lahja or American lahja. You have an American or Canadian, uh, 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 what's a lahja? Uh, pronouncement, way of pronouncing. Right. 
Jimmy. In Sahihain as well, on the authority of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'anhu, the Prophet sallallahu said, the example of a believer who recites the Quran and acts on it is like an orange, which tastes nice and smells nice. You know, when you get a nice orange, a nice piece of fruit, a fresh orange, not like the ones we just got, but those, those nice ones that are, you know, the spring, it's in the right season, it just smells so good when you peel it. The Prophet ﷺ made an example. He said, the example of a believer who recites the Quran and acts on it, that means they practice it, is like an orange which tastes nice and smells nice. And the example of the believer who does not recite the Quran but acts on it is like a date that tastes sweet but no smell. So, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned two believers there. He mentioned the one, the example of the one who recites the Quran and practices it. And he mentioned the other one who doesn't really recite the Quran that much. They're, they're, unfortunately, they're not reading the Quran that much, but they practice what they know. They do have some ilm, maybe. Maybe they have some knowledge, but they're not reading the Quran like they should. So they, they both have khair. They both have good. But the one who's better is the one who recites the Quran and practices it. They're sweeter. And in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of uh, Imama, radiallahu ta'anu, that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said, recite the Quran for it will come on the day of judgment as an intercession for its companion. So if you recite the Quran, it will intercede for you on the on Yom al -Qiyama. It will make shafa for you. Also in Sahih Muslim, on the authority of Uqba ibn Amr, radiallahu ta'anu, that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said, Would one of you not go to the masjid and learn or recite two verses from the Book of Allah, the Mighty and the Majestic? That would be better for him than two she-camels. And three verses would be better for him than three she-camels. And four verses would be better than four she-camels and whatever their number may be of camels. In Sahih Muslim, as well in the authority of Abu Hurairah, radiallahu ta'anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no people meet in the house of Allah, reciting the Quran and teaching it to each other, but the angels surround them, mercy covers them, tranquility descends on them, and Allah mentions them to those who are with him. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, maintain the Quran for verily by he who by he in whose hand Muhammad's soul is in. It, the Quran, is more intense in escaping memory than a camel from its reign. Meaning it's very easy to forget the Quran. Think about how much Quran you memorized before and how much you know now compared to when you were memorizing every day, you had a teacher, you were reciting. And that, that's a hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. So it shows us the importance of not just memorizing the Quran, but reciting the Quran often. And also, uh, the importance of Adam in general, that hadith, no people meet in the house of Allah, reciting Qur'an and teaching it to each other. So sitting in the halaqat of Qur'an is ajr azim. And learning the Qur'an in the masjid is ajr azim. And this is the ni'mah of those people who live in Medina and those places especially, because they're learning the Qur'an in the haram. Learning in Dara hadith learning in uh, the other uh, institute, Mahar al-Haram, learning, they, they're learning from Mashaykh how to read the Qur'an and memorize the Qur'an in the Haram, Ajr Ali, and the Malaik are there, and the Rahmah descends upon them. And may Allah bless us to be from amongst them. Amin, Ya Rabbil uh, And then, in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, None of you should say, I forgot such and such ayah. Rather, he was made to forget. So that's almost like a punishment. That's why we gotta, we got to get back on our Quran. May Allah forgive us. I mean, that's in Sahih Muslim. On the authority of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'anu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever reads a letter from the book of Allah, he will have a reward. And this reward will be multiplied by ten. I'm not saying that alif, lam, mim, uh, is a letter. Rather, I am saying that Arif is a letter. 
Lam is a letter and Mim is a letter. Ru'ahu Tirmidhi. So when you say Alif Lam Mim, that al Kitab al Fi, Alif is a letter you're getting Ajr from. Lam is an Ajr you're getting Ajr for. Mim is a, is a letter and you're getting Ajr just for those, those three letters alone. Ajr Azim from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a great na'am. Min ni'amin la. Also, the authority of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, This Quran is the banquet of Allah. Learn as much as you can from his banquet. This Quran is the rope of Allah, and it is a clear light and useful healing. It is a protection for the one who clings to it, and a rescue for the one who follows it. It is not crooked, and so puts things straight. It does not deviate so as to be blamed. It wonders, its wonders do not cease. It does not wear out with much rep repetition. So recite it. Allah will reward you with ten good deeds for every letter of its recitation. I'm not saying Alif Lam Mim uh, is a letter. Rather, I'm saying that Alif is a letter, Lam is a letter, and Mim is a letter, and this Ruahu Hakim. That's an, uh, an, an immense hadith. And one of the things we benefit from this hadith is it also shows us that the Quran, as is explained by the Prophet Sallallahu the Quran uh, is the rope of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says in Kitab al kareem for the believers in general, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا All of you hold fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. So Ahlul Iman, the Muslimin, are, are commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hold on to the rope of Allah all together and not divide into sects. We should not be groups. We shouldn't be Mu'tazia. We shouldn't be Jahmiya. We shouldn't be Khawarij. We shouldn't be Takfiris. We shouldn't be with Ikhwan al-Muslimin. We shouldn't be with Jama'at al We shouldn't be with Jama'at this or Jama'at that. We should be just Muslims following the book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the Salaf al -Sali. That's what we're supposed to do. And that means we're holding on to the rope of Allah. Because when we split, we're going with those other groups. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us and guide the Muslims in general. So that's beautiful in that hadith as it shows us that the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Quran as is explained in that hadith. One hadith explains another or one hadith explains uh, the, the Quran. is a tafsir for the Quran. Then Ben Othimini says, my brothers, these are benefits of reciting the Quran. These rewards are for those that anticipate it along with Allah's pleasure. A big reward for an easy action, and the loser is the one who lets this opportunity pass. Now it's Ramadan, we gotta recite the Quran. There are specific rewards for reciting certain surahs. In Sahih Bukhari, on the authority of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, uh, Abi Sa'id bin al Mu'ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Surely I will teach you the greatest surah in the Quran, Al Fatiha. The Fatiha is the seven oft-repeated verses of the Qur'an. From its greatness is that it is a pillar of prayer. A prayer is invalid without the Fatiha. If you don't recite Fatiha in your prayer, your prayer, you don't have a prayer. Okay? Meaning, if you, if you have the opportunity. If you're following an imam, there's a lot of controversy, a lot of ikhtilaf that's different. But if you recite on your own for sure, your prayer would not be valid if you don't recite Surah Al-Fatiha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no prayer is valid without the opening surah of the Qur'an, Mutafqan Ali, that means the Fatiha. Some other surahs are Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, learn how to recite surah, surah Al-Baqarah, for there is a blessing in it, and there is sorrow for abandoning it, abandoning it. And it is unbearable for the idol, and that uh, Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran are like two flowers which will shade those who learn them by heart on the Day of Judgment as if there were two clouds or two flocks of birds. And this is a Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the house in which al-Baqarah is recited will not be entered by the shaitan. If you recite Surah al-Baqarah, the shaitan doesn't get any action here. This is in Sahih Muslim. That is because it contains Ayatul Kursi. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, whoever recites Ayatul Kursi at night, then the shaitan will not approach them until they till they uh, wake. So very important to recite uh, ayat al kursi uh, at night. On the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is a door in the heaven, or there is a door in heaven which has been opened today. 
and it has never been opened before today. And an angel has come down through it. <coughs> this is an angel who has come down to the earth, and he never came down before today. He, that angel, gave the greeting of Salaam and said, Rejoice, for you have been granted two lights which have not been given to any prophet before you. The opening of the Quran uh, of the book, meaning Surah Al Fatiha, and the closing verses of chapter uh, of Baqarah. You will not read even one letter of them, but you will be granted reward. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Another specific surah is Surah Al Ikhlas. In the Sahihain, on the authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'anhu, the Prophet وسلم, said, By he who my soul is in his hand, indeed it is equal to one third of the Quran. Also, Al Falaq and An Nas have virtues associated with them. So strive much in reciting much Quran in this blessed month. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam used to review the Quran with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam once every Ramadan, except the year that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away. In that year, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam reviewed with him twice to make it strong and firm. Our pious predecessors, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, used to increase in reciting the Quran during Ramadan. Az-Zuhri used to say that when Ramadan came, it is just reciting of the Quran and feeding the poor. Imam Malik anhu used to stop his sittings of hadith and would only focus on the Quran. Qatada used to constantly finish the Quran every seven nights and during Ramadan every three nights. And during the last ten, ten days of Ramadan, every night, Ibrahim al Nata'i, rahimahullah ta'ala, used to finish, finish it during Ramadan every three nights, he would finish the Quran. And in the last ten days, every two nights. And Al Aswad, radiallahu ta'ala, used to recite it every two nights throughout the month. And that shows us the fada'il of the Qur'an and the fada'il or the benefits of reciting the Qur'an during the holy month of Ramadan and we ask of all the Almighty to bless us with tawfiq to recite the Qur'an often and to be of those who gain the reward and the blessings and may Allah forgive the Muslims everywhere and guide the Muslims everywhere and protect and preserve the Muslims everywhere especially our brothers and sisters in China who are even outlawed from reading and reciting the Qur'an and they're persecuted and they're re-indoctrinated by the shayateen by the mushrikeen, those people who worship idols, and those who people who worship the philosophy of Confucius, and those people who are devils in the uh, in the bodies in, of inhabiting human beings. They are devils and demons, and they are persecuting our brothers. So supplicate often that Allah removes the oppression of the Muslims everywhere, whether they be in Burma or Myanmar or they are in China or they in the central or they are in the central Arabic uh, Central African Republic or wherever they be persecuted wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam and may Allah forgive and bless our brothers and sisters in Palestine and bless them increase their risk and remove the torment that is being afflicted upon them from amongst the shayateen from amongst mankind in jinn wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad